In this problem, we're asked to factor completely 3x squared minus 7x minus 20. With every factoring problem, step one is, is there a greatest common factor? Well, as you can see from our polynomial, they do not, all terms do not have an x, so there's no x in common. How about the numbers? Well, 3 doesn't divide into negative 7, therefore they don't have any common numerical common factors. So we're going to factor this by the AC method, which means I'm comparing it to AX squared plus BX plus C. So I have to identify A. A is the coefficient of the X squared. In this case, it's 3. B is the coefficient of the X. It's negative 7. And C is the constant. It's negative 20. So I have to figure out a times C. So A is 3, C is negative 20, so my AC is negative 60. Whoops, excuse my pen. So AC is negative 60, and I need two numbers that multiply to negative 60 and add to B that is negative 7. If these numbers come to you very quickly, fine. But if you're having trouble coming up with these numbers, there is a systematic method you can use to find them. So remember, I need two numbers that multiply to a negative and add to a negative. If they multiply to a negative, the signs are different. But if they add to a negative, it means the bigger number has to be the negative one. So I start out with 1 in the number, and since the bigger number I want is to be negative, I'm going to start with 1 and negative 60. They definitely multiply to negative 60. And what is 1 added to a negative 60? It is negative 59. Is that what I'm looking for? No. So now does 2 go into negative 60? Yes. So I'll have 2 and negative 30. Those multiply to negative 60. And 2 added to a negative 30 is negative 28. Does 3 go into negative 60? Yes. 20 times. So 3 times negative 20 is negative 60. 3 plus a negative 20 is negative 17. Is that the number I'm looking for? No, but it's getting closer. Does 4 go into negative 60? Yes, negative 15 times. And what is 4 plus a negative 15? That's a negative 11. Still not the number I want. Does 5 go into negative 60? Yes, negative 12 times. And what is 5 plus a negative 12? It is negative 7. That is what I'm looking for. So these are the two numbers I need. So those are not my factors. That's what I'm going to break down my middle term into two terms. So I'm going to have 3x squared instead of negative 7x. I'm going to have plus 5x minus 12x minus 20. Because you can tell, excuse the bad handwriting, that 5x minus 12x gives me my negative 7x. So now I have four terms. How do you factor four terms? Grouping. Look at the first two. What do the first two have in common? Well, they have an x. So if I factor out an x, it's going to leave me with 3x plus 5. Then we bring down the middle sign negative. And now what do the last two terms have in common? Well, 2 definitely divides into both of them. Does anything bigger? Yeah, I think 4 divides into both of them too. So if I pull out a negative 4, now this is tricky when you pull out a negative. When you pull out a negative, it's going to change both of these signs here. So I negative 4 goes into negative 12x positive 3x times. Negative 4 divides into negative 20 plus 5. Now kind of double check. 
Does negative 4 times 3x give me negative 12x? Yes. Does negative 4 times 5 give me negative 20? Yes. So now let's look at does this binomial, is that the same as this one? Yes, that is the common binomial I can pull in front. So I have my 3x plus 5 times what is remaining? x minus 4. So now I have factored my expression into these two binomials. And don't forget, you can check your answer by falling it out.